Calaroga Shark Media. Hello, I'm Shelly Mack with your daily comedy news. Some leftover jokes from late night last week. You saw the whole thing with the abortion debate in Arizona. Seth Meyer said, 1864, was anybody even there yet? What was this, their first law after Don't Shoot the Piano Player? That's a great joke. Colbert, the law is so old that it predates the invention of the cowboy hat, the urinal, the paper clip, and the machine that makes paper bags. Should we really be enforcing laws from an era where the cutting-edge tech was bag? <laughs> Michael Costa commented on Trump's repeated lie that Democrats want abortions to happen post-birth. Costa said, come on, dude, Democrats don't execute babies after birth. They send them to Hillary so she can and harvest their organs. <laughs> Kimmel on a totally different topic. Of course, the cherry tree is the basis for one of our nation's most cherished untrue stories about a young George Washington who used his new hatchet to chop down his father's cherry tree. And then when his father asked, did you do this? He replied, no, it's a total witch hunt, which is great. Great joke. Ralph Barbosa is going to have a featured spot at the upcoming Netflix is a joke festival. Ralph will host something called Introducing Dot Dot Dot, a showcase highlighting emerging comics. This will be at the Vermont Hollywood in L.A. on May 1st. Some of the comedians include Glorillas Mora, Renee Vaca, Alec Flynn, Ashima Franklin, Dylan Carlino, Kel Creepe, and Mandal, all caps. I'm not familiar with any of them, which is great. I think it's great that Netflix is spotlighting eight comedians or so whose names I haven't even seen after prepping this show every day for almost five years. That's awesome. Good job, Netflix. MSN was curious about Dusty Slay and how he'll break apart country songs. Dusty said, I can't stop doing it. His famous routine makes fun of Alan Jackson and Jimmy Buffett's It's 5 O'Clock Somewhere. Slay takes exception with the line, It's only half past 12, but I don't care. It's 5 O'Clock Somewhere. Dusty says, and I'm like, well, that's not true. You know, it may be 5.30 somewhere, but we don't lose half an hour just because you change time zones. Well, now I realize that Newfoundland, Canada actually does have a half hour time zone. Sounds like Slay has fried his brain. He said, I can't just enjoy myself reading a children's book now. He questions the logic of stories like Humpty Dumpty. If he's so fragile, why did they let him sit on the wall? <laughs> then all of a sudden, here come the horses and they're like, oh, we'll help. And now we're like, oh, we got a lot more pieces. That's great. Decider spoke to Neil Brennan. They asked Neil if we're supposed to think of comedians as civic leaders. Neil said it should be like the stress release and a ballast to the punishment of life. It should be fun. So this idea, obviously, like Carlin, he's a poet and all that. He's a drug addict. Louis C.K., philosopher king, go on. All this stuff of exalting people, it's like, cut it out. No one can live up to this. And it's also incredibly childish that you need another person to do that when you can. So that's my feeling about all this stuff. It's like, it's childish. I, I get it. I understand it. I understand how it happened, et cetera. But like the Supreme Court has no credibility. But so, all right, Rogan and Chappelle, step up. What? Clarence Thomas has given RVs, but I expect more from you, clown. Decider said, well, isn't that John Oliver's fault for becoming an Emmy winning voice for calling us to action? Neil said he's a consumer advocate, but he didn't move to America to become a consumer advocate. I think he kind of fell into it. No one can win. Gandhi racist. Should I go on? Martin Luther King philanderer. And then you get assassinated. Decider said, so I guess I won't ask your thoughts on Palestine. Neil said, you don't want to know. Yes. Also, who cares? And I would hugely disappoint you, but I'm not going to say which direction. Mark Marin has been cast in Owen Wilson's upcoming Apple TV plus golf comedy. Owen Wilson plays Price Cahill, an over-the-hill ex-pro golfer whose career was derailed prematurely 20 years ago. Mark Marin will play Mitz, Price's best friend and former caddy, 10 episodes. A Chris Farley biopic is in the works. Josh Gad set to direct. I thought he'd actually be good as Chris Farley. The film will adapt the best-selling biography, The Chris Farley Show, a biography in three acts by Tom Farley Jr. Lorne Michaels is producing, so that'll definitely get made. Paul Walter Hauser will play Chris Farley. Leanne Morgan's new book is called What in the World? And it came out of asking just that. Leanne tells people, The book is a celebration of my wild ride from a child growing up in rural Tennessee to one of the top touring comedians in the country. I share it all, from the many mistakes to the triumphs. My story is a testament to the fact that it's never too late, you should never give up, and the importance of embracing it all with laughter and love. In Mumbai, a restaurant owner and his five staffers were booked for rioting after they allegedly threw eggs at comedian Mumwar Faruqi. Sources say the accused had invited Faruqi to their restaurant, but he went to another eatery nearby, so they threw eggs at him. Between the golden blogs and the NFL On the golden blogs We have fewer camera 
shots of Taylor Swift. You enjoy what I do here? You can go to buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news. The parking lot at the donuts chain has been packed lately. And I, I park on the side. People have figured out that side parking is actually the move, and now I can't even park on the side. It's really annoying. Taking a look at the comedy festivals. One show in Dubai tonight, Chris Stefano at Moon Tower. 7 o'clock, Amy Sedaris. 7 o'clock, Josh Johnson. 8 o'clock, Ken Flores. 9.30, Kathy Griffin. 9.30, Ismo. I've heard a lot about Ismo. Let's make him the late show early on. Amy Sedaris, Josh Johnson, Ken Flores. I don't know anything about Ken. Let me click on this. Ken Flores, Chicago-based stand-up comedian, a racing star in comedy thanks to his hilarious TikTok and Instagram reels. Hmm. I kind of want to do that show. I like seeing people I haven't seen before. All right, we'll do Ken Flores at 8, and then we'll do Eastmo at 9.30. Meanwhile, in Melbourne, it's another one of those random days where instead of them presenting everything to me horizontally, they've decided to give me boxes. That makes it confusing for me. All right, Aaron Gox, I hope I'm saying his name right. He has a recreation of the classic late-night TV format a la Letterman, Leno, Conan, Carson, etc. Well, that's in my wheelhouse. Let's take a listen to this. So I'm a dad. Is there any dads out there? I'm not the only one who's ruined my life. No, they're all right. Um, They're not too bad. I love them a lot, actually, but they're quite mischievous. They've got two daughters. Uh, Their ages are six and eight, and they're quite mischievous. They run through the house a lot. And I'm always saying to them, like, slow down, bloody hell, slow down, watch where you're going, you know, because I'm worried about them. And uh, But they don't listen, they just keep on doing it, keep on running through the house, and uh, and I'm worried something bad's going to happen. And sure enough, it did just recently happen to my youngest daughter, Katie. Smacked her head right on the kitchen bench, opened up a nasty wound, um, you know. But I, uh, I did rush her along to the doctor as quick as I could. Well, when I say as quick as I could, I did stop off at Red Rooster on the way, but um, <laughs> I didn't want to be listening to the doctor on an empty stomach. But, uh, but the doctor was great. When I got her there, he uh, patched up the injury. He was quite gentle and he said, look, take the next day off school to rest and recover. Uh, that's what Katie did. And the next day came around, we ta- t- uh, dropped her off at a classroom. And as I dropped her off, Her teachers noticed the injury and she's asked Katie what happened and Katie being young, she's not very confident, quite shy. So she was stumbling a bit. She was like, um, uh, um, uh, um. And I couldn't just stand back and watch this. I wanted to step in and help her out. So I was like, you bumped your head, Katie. (laughs) Okay. A guy in a basement recording a podcast. That was a long way for an okay joke. I think there's some material in there, but he's got to work on his pacing. I mean, that was a long clip. You were probably listening to the podcast going, oh, my God, John, hook this clip. Were you not? You were. I almost bailed out of it, too, but he got eventually to that punchline. But, yeah, you tighten up the writing, man. Get to it, get to it, get to it. Okay, next up, Bianca Ismailovsky's show is called Working Girl. She's here with her third solo stand-up show, taking you on a ride through her sex work career. Uh Uh-oh, let's see how far I can get into this clip before I have to keep it clean. Let's listen. The thing is, like, I'm bisexual, right? And I, when it comes... That's it. That was the entire clip one second before she started saying things I can't play for you. I try. All right, Bonnie Tangy's show is called Lab Meat. So I recently came out of a long-term relationship, right, and I've been reading this self-help book for breaking up. And in it, they say that you've got to learn to enjoy spending some time alone again. So they say what you should do is take yourself out on a date. So, right, just take yourself to a dinner, movie, something like that, just on your own. But I haven't done it yet. I'm just not going to pay for dinner for myself when I know I'm frigid. (laughs) It's a waste of money. But I don't actually have a lot of luck with guys and I don't really know why. Like, I mean, I know I'm not a supermodel, I know that. I'm, I'm not like Bondi Beach level hot. Um, but I am Bondi Junction hot, I reckon. <laughs> have you guys been to Bondi Junction lately? Yeah, it's not that good, so. That's why that's funny. <laughs> so I reckon um, parents are way too protective of kids these days. Like, super overprotective. And, like, I'm not an expert or anything. Like, I don't even have my own kids. Not anymore. <laughs> she's okay. I'm tempted to critique the pacing, but, you know, she's got a deliberate delivery. So, okay. Let's do one more. 
Chloe Pat's show is called If You Can't Say Anything Nice. Now, the cover art here is Chloe giving us the middle finger. So uh, I'm worried that this could be a little naughty, but, you know, we'll try. Let's listen. Fantastic. My name is Chloe. Um, I haven't really gigged much in Australia, and I'm sort of worried that some of my cultural references are going to get lost. Um, For example, I'm a lesbian. Um, Do you guys have that here? (laughs) Fantastic. We've got some down the front. Pink hair, I can see. Um, I uh, I am a butch lesbian. I love butch lesbians, Um, not in a gay way. Um, No, I, I don't sleep with butch women. Not because I don't find them attractive. It's just logistically very difficult to get two butch lesbians in the same room together to have sex because we're just perpetually walking each other home. (laughs) She'll get me to my door and I'll be like, well, I uh, guess I better be getting you home then, little lady. (laughs) The little lady in question is a 150-pound hockey player named Rock. Very funny. I like her a lot. Fantastic. That is Chloe Petz. And I wanted to leave you with this. I saw this on Twitter. This is from Bassem Youssef. He tweeted this on March 21st. Uh, but when I read it to you, you'll see why it makes sense. But I, I really like this. He wrote, Today I am 50. I remember a time when I thought 30 is quite old, 40 is really, really old, and 50 is one step away from death. Today I am 50. I knew it was coming. It was so far and yet approaching so slow. It creeps up on you bit by bit. And you wake up. And you're 50. At the age of 20, you feel like you're already tired, exhausted. You can't imagine going on 30 more years like that. Yet you do. You're there. You wake up and you're 50. Maybe there's one thing you wish you didn't leave behind. Youth. Oh, youth. What a wasted potential if people still have it. You see, I'm already sounding as a grumpy old man who just turned 50. You want to hold on to whatever remains of youth you have. You want to look younger, feel younger, be younger. The fake humility you pretend to show whenever someone tells you, oh, but you look great for 50. Rule of thumb, if people start telling you you look good for your age, buddy, you have aged. Imagine someone tells you you look great for 20. You will punch them in the face. Today I am 50, a day that I might have dreaded seeing wrinkles and furrows on my face and people close to you trying to convince you to do something for the wrinkles and the gray hair. And they utter the magical words so you can look, you know, younger. Yeah, here it is, younger, our kryptonite, our Achilles heel, our holy grail, our pain, our desires, our needs, our insecurities, our life potion, our happiness, and our grief all at once. Younger? Well, I am not. I am 50, and I am now more familiar, more friendlier, and even more in tune with these wrinkles and cracks and white hair all at once. I've spent more time with them than anybody else. Time has traced all my life in these. Why would I erase that? Why would I erase me? For the last five years, I planned for my 50th birthday photo shoot, where I would look so good with lights and professional photography, so I'd hear the praise of not looking my age, but for what? It's me and I'm 50, so here is a simple selfie. No filter, no Photoshop, no stupid ego trip. Today, I am 50, I'm alive, I am here, and I'm very grateful. That's your comedy news for today.